Hope you guys are having a wonderful day or have had a wonderful day. Here's some stories from some folks looking to have a decision made and they have no idea who you are. So let's listen into their story and give them a vote, shall we? First up, am I the a-hole for not financially helping family and friends despite being able to? My son Nick was born with a congenital heart defect 17 years ago. It required a $60,000 surgery in Israel if he was to survive past 12 months. I spent the first three months of his life running around begging people and searching for money. My parents gave us $100. They had well-paying jobs and guaranteed state pensions. When I asked my brother for help, he mumbled something about needing to save for his daughter's college. She never went, by the way. Anyone who met her could have told him that much. They did take regular vacations overseas, though. My department of 40 at work donated $30 and a card. At one point, I was seriously searching for ways to sell my kidney and liver. My in-laws sold their apartment for 35k. My best friend gave me another 7k, which was all he had. Accepting his help was one of the few times I cried in my adult life. I sold my car and every piece of furniture and electronics that wasn't bolted to the walls. My in-laws moved in and we spent the next five years living together. Five people crammed into a two-bedroom. Surgery was a success. As fate has it, I started a hustle and it took off. After years of hard work, I moved our headquarters to a Central European country to be closer to our EU clients. Even discounting for about two-thirds of my wealth that is tied up in the business, I am a multi-millionaire. My in-laws now have a four-bedroom house. We pay for them to go on vacations three to four times a year, or did before 2020. My son is a hard worker who makes me a very proud father. I can't say I hate those who didn't help back in the day. Hate is a strong word. Rather, I feel like I've learned my lesson and don't expect anything from them. I don't invite my parents for visits. They are welcome to pay for their flights in a hotel room, but I won't cover their expenses like I do with the in-laws. My brother asked for a loan to start his business five years ago. I said the time wasn't right. Two months ago, his daughter got into a car accident, drunk driving. Nothing seemingly life-threatening, but a lot of nasty scarring on her legs that required costly cosmetic surgery. I suggest that he looks into downsizing as I am focused on helping my kids get a good education. Old co-workers who wanted to join my business once it took off were told to apply through the regular process. Except for my best friend. He's been my partner from the start and I sleep better at night knowing we've got each other's backs. It all comes without saying that there have been a lot of very unhappy people in my life. In our culture you're expected to support your community and family, do favors. Nepotism is very much an ingrained thing. You're supposed to bring over your family if you're lucky enough to root yourself in the western world, help friends emigrate. My parents told me to my face they are ashamed of me and how the western culture has changed me. I've been called many things, way worse than a-hole and heartless. After hearing my story, tell me Reddit, am I though? Well, I've got my opinion, but let's see what the community says. Sad Responsibility 93 said, Not the a-hole. Your in-laws sold their $35,000 house to help you. Your best friend gave you all he had to help your son. Nobody else helps you or even pretended to help you and your son. Your in-laws deserve everything you're giving them because they were one of the only people there for you at your absolute lowest. You were going to sell your kidney for your son because nobody else helped you. Having your old co-workers who did not help you beg to get into your business don't deserve it. And not only that, but it is 100% fair that they are to apply just as anyone else. Your parents are just angry at you for not sharing your success. If you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. That goes for you and your son in relation to the rest of the family. Not the a-hole. But your parents and old co-workers certainly are. Naruk Yuza said, Not the a-hole. They're not obligated to help you and you're not obligated to help them. Don't help them. But your parents comment about let nature run its course and instead try for a new baby like, What the heck do they smoke? Who tells that to anyone? They essentially told you to let your son die and provide them with another grandchild. Should have gone no contact then and there. Nobody needs such people in their lives. T.A. Son Hart, who's the OP, replied with, It's very hard to explain this, but it's truly not as horrific as it sounds for people raised and living in that culture. I don't know how to get it across in a just manner. The only very weird analogy that comes to mind is how bone marrow jello is a delicacy in some countries that is served during holidays, and in other countries, people would have a complete what-the-heck moment if they are told this is food. Burns a lot 603 said, I understand what you're saying, but you were desperate to get the money because it was important to you, so you did whatever it took to make it happen, and they refused to help. For them to expect you to pay for cosmetic surgery for their daughter's scars from driving drunk is ridiculous after not helping at all for surgery to save your daughter's life. If you decide to pay some or all of her surgery, 
you should make it on the condition that she quits drinking and goes to meetings or counseling. A good percentage of people who drink and drive will continue to do it even after an accident or a DWI charge. Sexy Southern B said, This is exactly what I was thinking. I'm sorry it happened and she got scars. But didn't she do it to herself? Shouldn't she need to work to earn her own way to fix the damage she did? Fortunately, it sounds like only to herself. And I don't mean just some therapy or get a job. She needs to seriously think about the consequences of what she did and how she could have killed someone, not just get handed a free pass and a huge sum of money for cosmetic surgery to cover it up. What's next? They expect OP to pay lawyer fees and get her into another country? I really think this comment is important because so far, OP has said no to everything asked for from everyone who wasn't with him in the hard times. The first time he says yes, where does it stop? That's it for the community's thoughts. Let's hear some of yours. Leave them down below in the comments. In the meantime, I'm going to move on to the next one. It's titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my mom not to speak to me until she pays back seven years of rent? When my older brother and I were in high school, our mom explained that when we turned 18 and had graduated, whether we chose to go to college or not, she expected us to get a job and pay rent if we chose to stay at home. That wasn't a problem because we were taught we have to earn what we want, and plus, because we'd be adults at that point, so it only made sense. Fast forward to last Christmas. We had a small gathering, just my mom, two younger brothers, and me. The oldest couldn't be there, as he joined the Air Force out of high school and is wherever they have him. So anyway, gifts were opened and everyone is just relaxing and whatnot. I'm talking to the brother after me. He's 18, turning 19 in February. I ask him about school, his major, and what he plans on doing. General small talk. Well, he brings up how once it's back in stock, he plans on buying a PS5, a bigger TV for his room, and several other things. I chuckle and say, that's a lot to drop in a single purchase, joking about if he can afford that and still pay rent. He gets confused and says he doesn't pay any rent. And me wanting to confirm asks, and sure enough, he never paid anything for rent once he got a job after graduating. I dropped the conversation after that, but it didn't sit right with me. So on the 30th, I had called my mom and just asked her why she never charged my younger brother rent. The reasons and excuses I got from her were everything from, you were more responsible at his age, so it made sense for you to pay, to, he needs a head start in life. All of which, honestly, just made me even more upset because I always felt she was softer on the younger two growing up. But it was mostly small things, so I never paid much attention to it. In the end, I basically just yelled at her, saying she was always favoring them and being easier on them than she was when I was their age. I said until she pays back the seven years of rent I paid to her, then I don't want to speak to her. I guess she ended up telling people because after that call, I received a few calls from family members who say I was being an a-hole, making my mom cry for doing her best as a parent and etc. Even my older brother had called to say how much I ruined the holidays and I was just being greedy and that there's no way she can pay that back. I don't think I was wrong. But maybe I was a bit harsh. I had no problem paying the rent itself. I have a problem being the only one who was charged, and it looks like I will be the only one who was charged. Just seems completely unfair. I was paying for rent, a car, food, and putting what I could in savings. I was tough, but not cruel or anything. I learned to choose between wants and needs, which I think is great. So am I the a-hole? Because I know Reddit will ask these questions. I'm 27 male, I moved out after 25, and I paid $365 a month, every month, for the time I was living at home. Edit. So quick edit because I see a lot of the same questions popping up, so I'll answer those. What do I want out of all of this? Honestly, I don't know. I don't really care about the money, just the fact that this is a long time of her playing favorites over the years. The chances of my brother ever being made to pay rent at this point are zero based on past experiences. So the demand to be paid back was just the first thing I could think of knowing that fact. And it didn't help because the whole you're more responsible statement has been used excessively with me, not just with my mom, but other family members as well. What compromise would satisfy me? Ideally, an apology for all the obvious favoritism and having my brother pay something. But again, that will likely never happen. Has your mom's financial situation changed in that time? I couldn't say. Even after I started paying rent, there wasn't really any talk about finances. I saw at least one comment asking about my biological relationship with my brothers, the oldest and I share a, I think, dad, and the two younger share a dad. So, we're half-brothers. Our dad passed away some time when I was young, and theirs is still in the picture. He paid child support for both, still pays for the youngest, which is why I always let a lot of things slide, because I always thought, well, they have their dad, so that's why things are like that. So now that we've got some of the backstory, 
Let's see what the Reddit community thinks. Floppy Eared Dog says, Not the a-hole. It's not about the money. It's about the favoritism and disparate treatment between siblings. You want to be treated fairly. Instead of apologizing unreservedly, your mom turned on the waterworks to turn everyone against you. She's rubbing salt in your wound, and not the a-hole. Maleficent add 3958 agrees, not the a-hole. That's what pushes me to not the a-hole. Instead of being sorry, she did the flying monkeys thing in order to say, I a victim, I a victim, attack, attack. <laughs> Laurel Lynn replied, the mother has the emotional maturity of a child. I can never understand this. Every sane person in her place would admit that what they did was unfair and apologize at least. But no, she lashes out on OP instead, even though she was caught in her favoritism. She still keeps claiming that the sky is orange even though it's blue for everyone to see. And not only that, she feeds the rest of the family BS, because there's no way she would tell the true story, so that they would harass the OP. Freedom of Now said, OP is treated as a partner actually, huge not the a-hole. One last comment from Lanky Temperature 412. I had to pay for my own college fees, community college, and books, half of the car my parents helped me to get, gas, insurance, and any fun money I wanted to use. I was fine with that until my brother didn't have to do the same. He has circumstances beyond his control, but still. But at this point, my parents paid me back for what I'd paid, so it ended up being fair. I'd be livid if they had made excuses instead of trying to rectify the situation. All pretty good points. You have any you'd like to make down below? Let us know. I'm gonna move on. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter it goes both ways and refusing to help her? My wife was diagnosed with cancer a couple years ago, and we traveled out of state to give her the best care. It put us in a tough situation financially, and we didn't know what to do with my younger son, 13 male at the time. We didn't want to pull him out of school and ask my older daughter, 22 female at the time, if he could stay at her apartment while we were out of town. She lived with her boyfriend, in a one-bedroom apartment, but my younger one said he was fine with sleeping on the couch. She has an Etsy business and works from home, and there's a bus stop for my son right by her place, so she wouldn't have to drop him anywhere and could keep an eye on him after school, so I thought it wouldn't be too bad. However, she said she felt horrible, but this was too big of an ask and she couldn't help out. My friends were the ones who stepped up, and my son rotated and stayed at each other's houses every month so we were able to return. We were financially in a horrible place and had to sell our home and downsize to a two-bedroom apartment. We eventually got through the nightmare, and my wife is fully recovered, but we went no contact with my daughter. She reached out to us recently and said her boyfriend got laid off and her business hasn't been doing great this year, and they're struggling with their bills. She wanted to stay at our apartment while working in her new retail job to save money. I told her absolutely not. Helping family out goes both ways, and she didn't deserve our help. She'd been blowing up our phones calling us horrible parents. Are we the a-holes here? Edit. We did say we would cover our son's living expenses, but my daughter refused because she said she was okay babysitting him one to two times a week, but didn't want the responsibility of looking after him full time. Another edit. My son was given the choice of coming with us and changing school districts, but he wanted to stay with his sister. He ended up staying in his best friend's houses, and we've known their families forever, so he was fine. However, his first choice was staying with his sister, and we went to her first because she was family. We weren't sure how long treatment would take. If it just ended up being a couple of months, we didn't want him to have to move back and forth between schools. It turned out to be longer. We would have all moved permanently, but that ended up not needing to happen. The way this story was told, I've got my reservations, but let's see what the community thinks and what you think in the comments down below. Starting with My Tasun. What the heck is wrong with everyone here? I wouldn't dump my brother when my parents are struggling to keep my mom alive and fighting cancer. You are all mad. I could have been 15 and would have done everything on my power to make the situation a little bit easier. Forget your daughter. It's true that help goes both ways. Reddit, you are the first ones to say that family shouldn't forgive everything just because, and are the first ones to suggest no contact. Here's the perfect example of double standard because if OP was the wronged son, you would all be screaming bloody murder against the parent. But for some reason here the context wasn't bad enough, and the daughter deserves another chance after abandoning her brother while her mother had freaking cancer? No way. Not the a-hole. Big man Groting fam agrees. Exactly. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Not the a-hole, OP. Frequent visitors to this sub will have noticed that lots of people attempt to sing from the same hymn sheet as the hive mind in order to get up votes. This topic is very similar to the standard, my parents make me, parentification. Threads that pop up frequently that they've not taken any real time to consider the specifics. They see a sibling being asked to look after another sibling without taking into account the nuance. One parent dying. 
Both parents go off to save said parent's life. Adult daughter can't watch her teenage brother? Adult daughter is crap and is in serious need of a life lesson, which thankfully is about to hit her square in the face. Sounds like there's some people on both sides of the line for this one. How about you guys? We're anxious to see what you guys say down below. But we'll move on for now. With the story titled, Am I the a-hole for going behind my mom's back to get a diagnosis? So, background to this. I, 17 male, have a twin sister, 17 female. Our parents have always kind of had us compete with each other and are especially sticklers for academics. My sister has always done much better than me on that front. To be honest, I've always found school very frustrating. It's not like I'm thick or anything. I know loads of stuff and often know the answers in class. I've just always struggled with focusing and putting my thoughts together coherently in a way teachers like. I also have a horrible memory, so exams are a nightmare. I can study and study and study something for hours sometimes and still not remember when it comes to the test. And that's when I can study. Sometimes I honestly really, really want to, but I just can't. Like, I'll sit there, staring at my workbook for ages, and then there's just some block where I can't do it. My parents just kind of ignore all of this and tell me to study harder like my sister. I try some of her study methods, and some of them help, but mostly, they don't work for me. I always kind of thought I was just doomed to be crap at education. The situation. I started dating a boy about a year ago whose big sister is a psychologist. A few months ago, he and I were talking about school while she was in the room and she kind of said, sorry to butt in, but have you ever been tested for ADHD? I said I hadn't because I didn't think I had it. The image I had of ADHD was always the rambunctious kid who played class clown, which is very much not me. She explained that wasn't always the case and a lot of things I was describing sounded like ADHD symptoms. I relayed this to my parents and they both, especially my mom, got upset and said that I'm just looking for a way to not take accountability and that ADHD didn't exist in their day. I got upset, but talked to my boyfriend's sister again and she pointed me in the right direction to go and talk to people about it without my parents overseeing. Obviously, with the Rona, it was difficult, but I managed to get the necessary appointments and finally had it confirmed that I have ADHD. Now my parents are mad. They keep on about how I'm just trying to remove responsibility and how they don't recognize a diagnosis is valid. They've also said they don't want me talking to my boyfriend anymore, saying his family is a bad influence. We're both upset about it. Was it a bad idea for me to go to get the diagnosis when they told me not to? Interesting predicament. Let's see what the comments are and then what you think down below. Words Make Us starts us off with, So, absolutely not the a-hole. After reading the first paragraph, it seemed like a classic ADD without the hyperactive. But why go behind their backs instead of looping them in? How were you able to get a specialist appointment without your parents' consent? Go vent your age and insurance. Unless where you live, the protocols are different? Update the post. Didn't realize that ADD was no longer a diagnosis, but rather ADHD manifests as both internal and external hyperactivity. It's been a long time since I researched it. Thanks y'all for helping me to understand. OP replied with, I'm in the UK, we don't need insurance. My boyfriend's sister appointed me to some child psychologists who often deal with kids my age and my situation. Overbearing, controlling, abusive parents who try to stop them getting help. Words make us came back with, It is awesome that you were able to get a diagnosis then. I'm sorry your folks were upset, and still, not the a-hole. Hopefully, they will calm down and understand the necessity of this diagnosis. Baby Bear Bennett chimed in with, In the UK, you don't need parents' consent for most things from 16. At 16, you can legally have sex, rent your own place, and that's when doctors no longer have a right to disclose any of your medical information with your parents. At 17, you can drive, and at 18, you can do everything else. 21 is only for some very niche strip clubs. There's also a lot of people that think ADHD doesn't exist and is just an excuse for lazy parents to have naughty kids. Also, not the a-hole OP. I'm glad you're getting help and just wish you'd gotten it sooner. Your parents are borderline neglectful at best for forcing you to not get help. Edit. A lot of people have mentioned that doctors don't disclose most information to parents much earlier. It's true that they won't disclose anything unless they think the parents absolutely need to know about it after 12. 16 is just when they can no longer disclose anything at all to parents. I could have been clearer though. Thank you for watching the Red World. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like, subscribe, and see you in the next one.